Hey everyone, welcome or welcome back to Inglebard. Greetings, friend. Do you wish to look as happy as me? Yes. Today's video is all about happiness. And you know what they say about happiness, don't you? Happiness is hard to find. Excuse me? Happiness. Or happiness. And happiness can also be just 90 degrees away. Or 270. It depends on your monitor setup. Yes, that's right, my retro gaming friends. Today I've decided to grab a bunch of older parts that I had laying around and create a vertical retro pie setup. Now you can do this with any version of the Raspberry Pi or most other single board computers. What games or systems you'll be able to run will largely depend on the power of the SBC or whatever device you end up using to power your system. In my case, today I'm using my Raspberry Pi 3B Plus in my fancy little Mega Pi case. Isn't it adorable? Anyway, why am I using that instead of my technically superior Raspberry Pi 4? Because the Raspberry Pi gods had the nerve to corrupt the operating system on the SD card of my Pi 3B Plus, so I needed to reinstall an OS on it anyway. Coincidentally, I made an amazing discovery. One of the $3 monitors I bought while thrifting over two years ago can be rotated into portrait mode. Freaking sweet! Sweet indeed! I'd been using it as a secondary monitor for my main PC, but have now shifted that job to another monitor that I also happened to pick up while thrifting, this time about a year ago. This isn't a tutorial, review, or anything like that. This is just me sharing something that's kinda cool with the world. Yeah, other people have set these up before, but I decided to go for it anyway and cover just a few of the problems I ran into in case others who attempt this might have the same issues and benefit from my experience. First, why did I do this? Well, because lots of old arcade games have vertical displays, and it's nice to see them mostly fill up the screen instead of a thin strip on a normal horizontal widescreen display. It's also handy for Nintendo DS and Vectrex emulation among a few other systems. Also, I had everything I needed to get it going without having to buy anything. That includes a Raspberry Pi, a memory card, a card reader for the PC, gamepad, keyboard, and in my case an HDMI to VGA adapter, since the monitor I'm using has no HDMI port. That's what this big ugly thing is, but hey, works! You'll also need all the usual software. You don't need anything special for a vertical display, you just use the same old RetroPie or whatever image you want. You'll still write it to the SD card with whatever image writing software you normally use. In my case, I use Etcher. Again, this is not a tutorial, but I will still provide some links in the description below to some of the things that I use to create this setup. Really, after you get it up and running, all you have to do is edit the Raspberry Pi config file. You can do it on the Pi itself or on your PC. The your card reader will see the boot partition just fine. You really only need to add two lines. These two lines. See them? Yeah, those. The second one is super important because, like the text says, without it you will probably get terrible screen tearing. For some reason, it wasn't super easy for me to figure out why I was getting such bad screen tearing, and I had to do quite a bit of research to find this, but hey, now you don't have to, right? If you don't run into any weird problems or anything, this entire setup should really only take maybe 5 or 10 minutes, not counting however long it takes you to transfer games to the Pi's memory card. You can do that with the usual methods, and if you need help with that part, I strongly suggest checking out the RetroPie website or some other tutorials that go in-depth on that topic. Just a note on Drastic. I'm using a stock Pi 3B Plus here. Drastic is not always full speed on this device. I don't want to overclock the Pi because in this case I don't have a fan for it, and I've already gotten temperature warnings at points in the past inside this little Megapie case. You can enable multi-threaded rendering, which can take care of that issue most of the time, but it might also swap the top and bottom screens. If that happens, well, you can also just set a button on your controller to manually swap the screens. 
I also wouldn't suggest trying to render 3D at higher resolutions on the 3D+. Plus. It just isn't full speed on any of the games I tried, even with multi-threaded rendering enabled. Most of the time it hovered somewhere between 75 and 85%. Now let's talk results. Pretty cool, I'd say. Yeah, it would be nicer if I had a 4x3 or 3x4 CRT TV to use for this, but it still beats the hell out of playing these games in a tiny vertical strip in the middle of a 16x9 LCD. A lot of arcade classics run in the 4x3 aspect ratio, or technically 3x4. Things like Donkey Kong, Donkey Kong Jr., Galaga, Dig Dug, Space Invaders, Qbert, Frogger, and more. Seeing them run in a much more correct orientation just brings a smile to my admittedly dorky face. Sorry about the video quality, but I wanted to get these on actual camera instead of a direct feed to show you the games up and running in real time. There are lots of arcade games from the mid-80s to early 90s that run in a vertical orientation, including some games that you might not expect if you're unfamiliar with them. Like what you may ask? Things like maybe Contra and Super Contra, to name just a few. There are also plenty of vertically scrolling shooters using this setup, including vehicle-based ones like the 1940X-Series from Capcom, or overhead running gun games like Commando, Mercs, Desert Breaker, and Gunsmoke. What about the Nintendo DS? DS results are pretty decent on a Pi 3D+, Plus. they'd be even better on a Pi 4. Well, if the menu in Drastic worked right on a Pi 4, they'd be better, that is. At least the menu does work properly on the 3B+. Plus. Aside from the issue I mentioned with multi-threaded rendering and screen swapping, there are some other problems. The biggest is that this particular version of Drastic doesn't have very many screen layout options. What do I mean? Well, on the Android version of Drastic, you can split the screens and add a gap between the top and bottom screens. A lot of games depend on that gap for the image to look correct. Games like Contra 4 and the Dragon Quest games that are two screens tall, for example. You can still play these games, but they definitely feel off when you play like them. Especially in Contra 4, where the gap is essential to track the angle of enemy fire headed your way, and you also need it to basically aim correctly yourself. Moving right along, you can use the left stick to control the stylus and a button you assign to press down on the touchscreen for games that require it. This works very well for games that just require a few taps here and there, and don't require any precise or fast motion on the touchscreen. For anything that does require quick and precise motions, this is not really going to work. The last thing I'll say about Drastic on the Pi 3B Plus is, just bear in mind that if you're familiar with Drastic on other platforms, this version is missing a lot, and I mean a lot of options. On the other hand, it's also free, so you've got that at least. Oh, want to take a look and see how bad it is when you use high-res polygons? And finally, here are some Vectrex games running on the Pi 3B+. We begin with Pole Position. Yeah, it looks a little funky if you've never seen this version, or if you don't know what the Vectrex is. The Vectrex was a self-contained game system that came with a display and controllers with four buttons each built in. It didn't use bitmapped graphics like most games or systems of the day, instead it used vector graphics like the arcade versions of Star Wars or Tempest. It makes for pretty smooth 3D, way better than you could do at home with its contemporary consoles. I mean, this thing came out in 1982. Most of you watching this probably weren't even alive yet. Yeah, I was, but I'm an old man. Here's a port of Konami's arcade hit Scramble. Here's a cute little platform game called Spike. And here's a few more. Yeah, that tracks runs pretty decent on the Pi 3B Plus vertically. Creating a vertically oriented retro gaming system is something I've wanted to do for a very long time. 
I really wanted to play a lot of these older arcade games in the correct aspect ratio or one closer to it. And also, it's handy for DS games and Vectrax and possibly some other systems that I didn't really get into too much here. Now, frankly, this is something I would have done far sooner if I hadn't been too dumb to realize that the monitor that I bought from a thrift store a little over two years ago had the ability to be rotated into a vertical orientation or portrait mode, whatever you want to call it. Now, of course, I would love to have set this up using a 4x3 CRT TV. The problem is, I don't have one of those, and even if I did, I don't really have room to set it up anywhere. Those things are thick and take up a lot of space. So who knows? Maybe once, you know, the world is done ending, I'll be able to go back to Goodwill or some thrift stores and see if I could find a nice 4x3 monitor that has the ability to rotate. So that's gonna do it for this video, my retro gaming friends. Do any of you have a really cool vertical setup that you use for your retro gaming? I'd love to hear about it in the comments. With that, I'll say thanks for watching, and see me later.